Put your body in vacation mode and foster the feeling that comes when you're relaxed and your body will heal over time. Back in my 20s, I had high blood pressure. So I went to the doctor and I was prescribed medication. I will tell you that I wasn't the most forward thinking 20 something year old, but one thing I did ask was, why is my blood pressure elevated? I'm in my mid 20s, I'm supposed to be in the prime of my life. And the doctor's answer, genetics. I'm Dr. Andrew Neville and I heal adrenal fatigue and its many varied symptoms, including blood pressure issues. Real quick, I wanna ask that you hit subscribe so that you receive notifications when I release new videos here. Okay, so as it turns out in my 20s, I didn't tolerate the side effects of the blood pressure medication. So I needed to start looking elsewhere for help. This experience was yet another step in the evolution of my understanding of health and disease. To finish the story, my blood pressure did come down little by little into the normal range as I started to put the pieces of my own healing puzzle together on my own. You might be wondering, as I was, how could I possibly heal myself and be free from this high blood pressure if the condition was genetic? The resounding answer is epigenetics. If you can think back far enough to high school, you'll probably remember learning that our genes are made up of DNA. We receive one copy of our genetic code from our mother, get another copy of our genetic code from our father, and this genetic code combination, it sits on our chromosomes deep within the nucleus of every cell. These genes determine whether we have blue eyes, brown eyes, whether we have straight or curly hair, whether we're tall, short. These genes are indeed set in stone and they're almost completely fixed. But the genes designated for health and disease at a cellular physiologic level, they don't work this way. They aren't fixed or set. They are very changeable depending on our environment. And epigenetics is the study of how our environment affects our genetic expression. The conversation of epigenetics or genetic expression that depends on our environment never came up when we were learning whether our eyes were blue or brown, did it? Think about it this way. If your genetics or your DNA, think about them as the blueprints of your body held deep within every cell. Then epigenetics is your body deciding which of these blueprints your body reads at any certain time. See, we don't read all the blueprints all the time. The body is always functioning on a minute to minute basis based on which of these blueprints we're currently expressing or reading. We have different needs at different times of our life, when we're babies versus toddlers versus young adults. The body's needs are different when we're sleeping when we're active and awake, when a woman's pregnant versus, you know, if she's going through menopause, when we're sick, or even when we're on vacation. So if I continue that analogy that our genes are the blueprints in our body, then epigenetics determines which blueprints our body reads at various times in our life. A very basic example is that of a predator. So think of a tiger chasing. Not all that pleasant, but think of that tiger briefly. Your body would, of course, have to jump into fight or flight mode. But how does that happen? Through epigenetics. The cells get a signal from the nervous system and from your endocrine system or your hormones. And that signal tells the nucleus of the cell to turn on the genes or to express or read the genes that'll prepare that cell tissue organ, the entire body for battle. This signal is telling your body to engage the heart, engage the lungs, turn up your metabolism. So your heart beats faster and stronger. A bunch of glucose is released into the body so the muscles can use that for energy immediately. Epigenetics is also telling the body to constrict the blood vessels in our limbs, funnel all that blood to our core just in case we get injured. This would ensure that we don't bleed out before we find safety. And this process would also be uh, effectively raising your blood pressure, by the way. Our body is diverting energy only to the organs that are essential in that survival situation. But at the same time, it's also turning off organs that are non-essential at that very moment. It's turning off your immune and digestive systems and your hormones, like the ones that are geared for reproduction. All of this occurs at a cellular level through genes being turned off or on through epigenetics. Let's contrast this response to a tiger, say, if you're on vacation. Maybe you're sitting on the beach under an umbrella for a couple of weeks. Maybe you're at a mountain cabin sitting on the deck, relaxing. You are in vacation mode. Since there's no tiger here on vacation, you don't need to engage your organs of fight or flight, like your heart, your lungs, your metabolism. You can simply allow them to function in their relaxed state. During this physi physiologic state, epigenetics can turn on your organs of rest and digest, the organs that are also control healing and repair. It'll wanna turn on your immune system so it can clean up cellular debris and ward off any lingering virus that might be around. Your body will stop suppressing your digestion, turn on the nerves to your digestive apparatus so you can process food and nutrients efficiently. You'll even stop suppressing your reproductive hormones since now you're safe, and now you can consider the survival of your species through procreation. 
This too all happens through epigenetics and expression of your genes at a cellular level. The state that we enter into during fight or flight, we call that stress physiology. It is governed by epigenetic expression. And this physiologic state creates ex excessive wear and tear on the body. But the physiologic state that we enter into during rest and digest or vacation mode is also governed by epigenetic expression at a cellular level. It turns on the genes for healing and repair. And these two should be in balance. Obviously, being in a state of excessive wear and tear coupled with the suppression of healing and repair is not an ideal situation for good health and longevity. And this is what happens when we feel stressed. This delicate balance in our physiology is crucial to our overall well-being. We absolutely need to mobilize our energy during a stressful situation. And I'm not talking about tigers here. I mean, I'm talking about modern life's daily stressors. Epigenetics is at work when somebody cuts us off on the highway, or even if we have to get up on stage and talk in front of a group of people. But these are short, acute situations where our body automatically returns, turns on fight or flight and then shuts it off after the stressor, after there's no, no, there's no threat. When we go to sleep at night, epigenetics turns on the healing and repair functions in our body. And the next morning, our body's healed, meaning it's returned to a normal, healthy baseline and we're no worse for wear. But now that you know how epigenetics works on a healthy body, I want to talk to you about how sometimes it malfunctions in a body of a person suffering from adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is a problem with a broken stress response system, and this affects our epigenetics. A broken stress response system means our body now perceives threats and dangers all the time. It believes there's tigers everywhere, even if, of course, there are none. The contributors to this constant state of stress physiology are numerous and varied. You know yours better than I do. But very simply, imagine your stress tolerance was a bucket. It holds any and all stress, but chronic stress over time overflows the bucket, and we end up having very little or no tolerance to any stress at all. It's well documented that if your body is constantly in a state of fight or flight, you turn on a particular set of genes, express a specific part of your genetic code, meaning it reads that blueprint for survival. But it does so excessively during adrenal fatigue because the body thinks it's perpetually being chased by a tiger. And this produces excessive wear and tear on the body, which means you're now gonna be predisposed to the chronic diseases that millions of us suffer from today. Cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease, autoimmune, metabolic diseases like diabetes, even cancer. Not to mention the fact you're also going to experience all the symptoms associated with stress, like anxiety, insomnia, depression, pain, fatigue. But let's think back to our rudimentary education about what genetics are. Remember I said that the genes designated for health and disease at a cellular and physiologic level, they're not fixed or set. They are very changeable depending on your environment. You remain stuck in fight or flight or stress physiology and you're going to suffer from all those chronic symptoms and conditions. But if you fix that broken stress response system and get better at turning on that rest and digest physiology, your body repairs and heals all of those issues. Whenever a practitioner of any kind tells you that something's genetic, you should challenge that in your mind. You should think of the possibility of changing those genes or really changing the expression of those genes using this concept of epigenetics. The reliance on the excuse of genetics as a factor in disease, it's lazy. And it's often a cop-out by practitioners who simply don't have the time or understanding to explain epigenetics to you. And I would also suggest that it's harmful because it takes away all the control from the individual. The differential expression of different genes is one of the key pieces of your therapeutic puzzle in healing adrenal fatigue and its symptoms, basically turning off the genes for wear and tear and turning on the genes for healing and repair. So now you know your body has this innate ability to help you to heal by changing your health blueprint. Our bodies have been healing themselves for thousands of years. All we have to do is turn that physiologic, physiologic state on that allows that to happen, and we can use the power of epigenetics to do it. You ultimately don't need to rely on pharmaceuticals to overcome these diseases or suppress the symptoms of these diseases. This does nothing to fix the underlying problem. The bottom line, put your body in vacation mode and foster the feeling that comes when you're relaxed and your body will heal over time. I hope this empowers you to Take your health in your own hands, maybe even investigate epigenetics further. Honestly, you don't have to know anything about epigenetics at all, but you sure as heck should have a doctor that does. You are truly in control.